For thine is the kingdom, the power, and the glory forever. Amen. So thank you, everybody, for joining in to another one of our Wednesday devotionals. This is actually the last Wednesday devotional in our Rooted in Prayer series. And we're going to be taking a little bit of a break as we begin to look ahead and reevaluate what the fall is going to look like. We are continuing to pray and hope that things can begin to reopen, but we're trying to see what is the best means for us to move ahead with this midweek study. So I wanted to focus as we're looking at the Lord's Prayer in this last part, and this last part is often called the doxology. I wanted to focus on the very last word, amen. And the reason I say that is because sometimes I think we forget what amen even means. In the Greek, it means truly, truly, we're affirming our prayer. As we conclude our prayer with amen, we are concluding, we are affirming the power, the glory, and the kingdom of God. Sometimes we say amen as if we're finishing a prayer, as if it stops us from prayer, but Paul tells us in 1 Thessalonians that we need to pray continuously. We never cease praying. You see, our amens are not a conclusion. They're an affirmation of God's mercy, his goodness, and his work. And as we say that amen for the Lord's prayer, as we say that amen in our own life, we know that we are affirming the work of God, knowing that he continues to ring true. So what is exactly does it mean? Thine is the kingdom, the power, and the glory forever. Well, actually, if you look at the Lord's Prayer, if you look at Matthew 6 in your translations, you might not even see that section. It's not listed in, in all of the translations because it's not written in all the earliest Greek manuscripts. So the reason is people believe this was an oral tradition and it just kind of got added on later to scripture, but we have enough manuscript evidence to show that it doesn't really belong in the canon of scripture. But I think it's a wonderful thing for us to add in our tradition of the Lord's Prayer because we are continuing to affirm that we are living not of our own kingdom, not of our own power, not for our own glory, but for God's. And as we look back, as we look ahead of this crazy year of 2020 and just wondering what God is doing, we know that we are sustained through his kingdom, through his power, and through his glory. And above all else, we are sustained by being rooted in prayer. And I hope that this series was just an encouragement for you that we can say the Lord's Prayer, is that we can model our prayers after the Lord's Prayer, and we can continue to go to our God day after day in prayer. And know that it is through our prayers that we are sustained. It's through our prayers that we are delivered. It's through our prayers that we give it all back to God. So if you would conclude with me by just saying the Lord's Prayer. Our Father who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread. And forgive us our debts as we forgive our debtors. And lead us not in temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom, the power, and the glory forever. Amen. So as we move into just this time of discussion, I just wanted to ask simply two questions. What does it mean to be rooted in prayer? How have you let God transform your prayer life? during these past few months. And as always, I appreciate you so much for tuning in, for being encouraged. Stay well, take care, and God bless.